Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to be writing chemical formulas. So as promised, we're going to be writing some chemical formulas down. Now a chemical formula displays the number and kinds of atoms that are found in a molecule. And you've seen these before, you've probably even said these things before, or not even realized that it's a chemical formula. So here's a few examples. Things like H2O, water, that's a chemical formula. NaCl, salt, chemical formula. O2, that's a chemical formula. What about that one? 2HCl, that's hydrochloric acid. What you can see, we have elements and we have numbers. So the elements tells us what element is present in that compound, obviously. Uh, the number tells us how many we have. So a few things. When we see something like 2 that's written below the line, that's what's called a subscript. So in this case, H2O, that's telling us that we have two hydrogens for every one oxygen. When we see something like sodium chloride and there's no numbers, well, when there's no numbers, we simply say that there's one. So there's one sodium, there's one chlorine. With O2, there's only one element, oxygen, but there's two atoms that are combined together. But then we see 2HCl. When we see a number in front, that is a coefficient. That tells us how many molecules we have. So hydrochloric acid is one hydrogen and one chlorine atom combined together. But when we see that 2 in front, that means we have two HCl's. That makes sense? So in order to write a chemical formula, you need to know some information. You need to know what's called the oxidation number. Now the oxidation number tells us how many electrons that atom needs to either gain or lose in order to have a complete outer shell. Remember the octet rule. All atoms want to have eight electrons in their outer shell. They're either going to gain or they're going to lose electrons in order for that to happen, or maybe they're going to share these electrons. On your periodic table, let's write down what the oxidation numbers are for the A families. So starting in family 1A, the oxidation number for all these is 1 plus. So hydrogen all the way down to francium is 1 plus. In family 2A, or the alkali earth metals, they are all 2 plus. Then we're going to jump way over here to where we see boron in family 3A, that is 3 plus. And then starting with the carbon family, that is 4 plus. In other words, in groups 1, 2, and 3A, they all are going to be looking to get rid of electrons. And actually, group 4 could be 4 plus or minus. In family 5A, its oxidation number is 3 negative. So what that means is that these elements, like nitrogen, is going to try to find three more electrons. It has five electrons. Easier to find three more than to get rid of five. Oxygen in that family is going to have an oxidation number of two negative. The halogens in group 7a is going to have one negative. And our noble gases are going to be zero. So the noble gases, they're not going to react with any other element. They're noble gases, for crying out loud. These are going to be good numbers to know when we are writing out these formulas. Now, what about all these, you say? Remember, these were the B families. They could be 1 plus. They could be 2 plus. They could be 3 plus. They could be 4 plus. We can't tell just by looking at its position on the periodic table. That's good and bad. The good news is you're going to be given a table that will tell you what they are, or it'll be written in the form of Roman numerals, and I'll show you that in a moment. The bad news is, I guess there is no bad news with that if you're getting the information, right? Let's practice writing some of these. Sodium is one plus. So I'm gonna write that down real quick. Chlorine over here is one negative. So we're gonna use the crisscross method. How do we write the formula? Well, we take the oxidation number for one and it is going to go and be the subscript for the other, and the vice versa. This one negative is going to be the subscript for that one. Because each of these are one, we don't write the number one. We simply put NaCl. That tells us that there's one sodium and one chlorine. Right? Pretty simple. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have potassium, which is one plus, and bromine, which is 
one there. One negative, we do the crisscross method. The one goes with the potassium. Potassium is one goes with bromine, and so we would write this as KBr. They're both one, so we just have to write the element down, and that tells us that there's one potassium, one bromine. Ah, but they're not going to be all that simple, are they? So let's take a look at this. Copper. Ooh, copper, you're one of those B families, right? Oh, but there's a Roman numeral there. That's going to tell us what the oxidation number is. So copper is 2 plus. Chlorine is 1 negative. So here we're going to actually see something happening. The 1 goes with the copper and becomes its subscript. The 2 goes with the chlorine to become its subscript. So we would write this as CuCl2, copper chloride. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have iron. Oh, not another one. But we have the Roman numeral. So we see that iron is going to be, this one is going to be 2 plus. Sulfur is 2 negative. So again, we do the crisscross method. The 2 comes here and this 2 comes over here. Now we might think that it's Fe2S2. Here's the thing though about these uh, oxidation numbers. If we can reduce, we have to reduce. Iron sulfide is simply going to be FeS. Right, well, let's take a look at this one. Lead is... Wait, what's up with this? This was in the 4 plus, 4 minus, but it says uh, that in Roman numerals 2. Well, that means that this is an element that has more than one oxidation number. Again, you would be told this. So lead 2, 2 plus. Chlorine is 1 negative. So the 1 goes with the lead. The 2 goes with the chlorine. And so how, would you write this? That's right. PbCl2. Lead chloride. Let's do another one. Here's copper. That's another B family. So we're told that copper is 1 plus. Oxygen is 2 negative. So the 2 goes with the copper, becomes its subscript. The 1 goes with the oxygen. And how would you write this one? That's right. It would be Cu2O, copper oxide. And that's all there is to it. All you need is the oxidation number, you do the crisscross method, and you have the chemical formula. Pretty simple. We're going to be practicing some of this in class, and I can't wait to see you then.